May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify us, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless to the coming of the Lord. For the one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless until the coming of the Lord Jesus. And the one who called you is faithful, and he will do it. Mm. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. The brother talked about already how God made us. And I go, Lord, that's a confirmation of what I'm supposed to say. In the garden, God took the dust of the ground and he formed Adam with all of his organs, with all of the systems of the body, with the cells, with the circulatory system, with the bone structure, an incredible phenomenal e event there when God put Adam together. And here he is laying on the ground, kind of cold and pale looking like we see people in caskets with no life in them. The body is there. All the systems and the organs and everything is there but there's no life. And I picture, and this is one of the things when I get to heaven, I want to see in God's video library. I want to see the parting of the Red Sea. But I want to see what happens when God made form down from the dust and he's laying there in my own mind, I picture God just kneeling down and turning his head up like he's going to give him CPR. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says God breathed into the nostrils of man the breath of life, and man became a living soul. The coming together of the breath of God in the dust of the earth formed wow. us as a human being, a yes. soul. Yes. We're unique and different from everybody else. Nobody else has the same genes and chromosomes and personality and design that you have yes. by God. You are totally unique. God is not willing that any should perish because he made them all. That's Have right. you ever as a young boy at school made something out of clay, made something with your hands, and you took it home to show your mommy and daddy? You were proud of it. It was your design. It came from you. That's how we are to God. He loves us individually, and we're unique part of his great plan. A family. God's design is to have a family. So here we are. So Adam, here's Adam, and he's laying there. He's laying there, and he's he's he's, you know, speaking of exercise and all of that. Adam, what happened? God breathed into him, and what happened next? I picture Adam doing the first sit up. He just sat up. And you wonder what his first thoughts were, don't you? I do. I do. But here, the point is this. We're a spirit. That's the breath of God. That's the eternity that God breathed into us. We're a soul, a unique individual being with personality and, and a unique design by God. And we're a physical body. And I'm here to tell you today, God has been dealing with me over the last few years that God wants us to be whole yes. in all three parts yes. of our life. Yes. 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 Whole in our spirit, our relationship with Him. Whole in our soul, who we are in our, in our uniqueness and how we relate to ourselves and other people. And He wants us to be whole in our body. When all three of these areas of your life, when you're growing and you're flowing with health and wholeness in all three of those areas, that's when I believe we can experience the life that Jesus said, I've come that you may have life to the full, Till it overflows. Yes. Now I'm not saying all the time you can have all of those areas, but I'm telling you, there's some high spots in your life where you can feel good physically in your soul. You know, God's restored your soul, and in your spirit, you're really hanging with God and you're flowing with Him. Amen. I'm gonna tell you what, that's life. It Amen. doesn't get any better than that. That's right. Amen. It doesn't get any better than that. Right. You are here today. We're gonna to talk about spirit for five minutes. You are here today because God wants to spend eternity with you. He has called you specifically out of this world to be joined with Him forever. He chose you before the foundations of time right. to be His eternal friend. Yes. 
We were designed for friendship with God. What a great thing. Amen. What a great thing. I can't hardly stand that. I, mean, I can't hardly, <laughs> my emotions can't hardly take that. God wants me. Yeah. He likes me. Yeah. He made me just the way I am. Wow. With all of the, you know, one of the big problems we have in life is we don't accept ourselves the way God has made us. Right. Right. You know, for years and years I go, well, why, why am I not tall, dark, and handsome? Why do I have this nose that's like this? Why am I short? Why this? Why that? We, we're not satisfied with how we were, with, you know, in our, a lot of the unchangeable things in our life. We're not satisfied with them. And I remember one day, God says, Charlie, would you just time out a minute, time out. You know, if, if you look in the mirror, if you brought people up here and we looked in the mirror and you said, look, I'm going to give you 30 seconds and I want you to write down every single thing you'd change about the way you are, the way you look. All of us to get our pen out and start writing down. We're not satisfied with who God has made us. God made you unique just like you because He wanted one just like you. Yeah, right. Come on, bro. He wanted one just like you. And when I began to understand, it's okay to be me. It's okay. I'm cool, Lord. I like me. I'm going to be me. I'm going to be me. Charlie Brown. Come on, Charlie. Lord, I ex- and it's like a weight lifted right off of me. Praise. And I said, God, well, the unique personality that my little grandkids thinks is crazy, and my wife thinks I'm crazy, and I laugh too loud, I'm too loud, and all the things that people say about me, I'm going to be who you created me to be. Yes, because, God. see, God wants the real us to stand up. Yes. yes. He wants the real you to stand up. Yes. See, but from the time we're born to the time we're about 21 years old, you and I, we take a lot of hits. When I was a little boy, I got molested twice by homosexual men. You don't think that damaged me for a while? When you, when little kids, the psychologists tell us when you, little children in childhood get damaged and th- think we put them down, they get lied to, uh, pe- pe- people uh, uh, call you names, and all of these kind of things. By the time you're 21, your soul, your personality, who God created, is, has been, you know, it, it has taken a lot of hits. And you're kind of warped, and you're, you know, some people just crawl up in a shell, get depressed. And God's in the business not only of helping us know Him, Amen. but He wants us to be whole in our soul. Right. He came to restore our soul, who we are as a unique being. And God can do that, and He wants to do that. Amen. Hallelujah. I'll read you something that uh, kind of describes this a little bit out of. Um, in regards to the soul out of the Psalms. You remember Psalms? <clears throat> the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. Amen. God wants you and I to become every single thing He intended for us to be when He first thought us up. Where did you think you began? <clears throat> Where did you start? You started in the mind of God. A long time ago. That's right. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> you started in his mind. We take a lot of hints, but God's in the business of restoring our souls. This concept of soul restoration can be better understood if we take a look at the sheep and their habits. For it is a sheep in the care of the good shepherd who is talking in this psalm, this psalm is talking about. It parallels our relationship with our Heavenly Father, the Good Shepherd. Often a sheep, often sheep can become cast down or a cast sheep. This is an old English shepherd's term for a sheep that is turned over on its back and cannot get up again by itself. A cast sheep is a very pathetic sight. Lying on its back with its feet in the air, it flails away frantically, struggling to stand up without success. Sometimes it will bleed a little for help, but generally it lies there, lashing about in frightened frustration. If the shepherd doesn't arrive on the scene within a reasonable short time, the sheep will die. This is why a good shepherd counts his sheep often to see that all of them are on their feet. This is the way it happens. A heavy, fat, or long-fleeced sheep will lie down comfortably in some little hollow or depression in the ground. It may roll on its side slightly to stretch out or relax. Suddenly, the center of gravity in the body shifts so that it turns on its back far enough that the feet no longer touch the ground. It may feel a sense of panic and start to paw frantically. Frequently, this often makes things worse. It rolls over even further. Now it is quite impossible for it to regain its feet. 
As it lies there struggling, gases begin to build up in the rumen, which is a part of the stomach. As these expand, they tend to retard and cut off blood circulation to the extremities of the, of the body, especially the legs. If the weather is very hot and sunny, and sunny, a cast sheep can die in a few hours. If it is cool and cloudy and rainy, it may survive in this position for several days. When the shepherd finds a cast sheep, he gently rolls it over on its side. This relieves the pressure of the gases in the rumen. If the sheep has been down for a long time, he massages its limbs to reestablish circulation to them so it can stand up and walk again. Even then, sometimes the sheep will stumble briefly until it has regained its full strength for walking. Little by little, the sheep will regain its equilibrium. It will start to walk steadily and dash about to rejoin the others. It is set free from its fears and frustrations and giving another chance to live a little longer. Even the strongest, largest, and healthiest sheep can become cast and be a casualty. You see the parallels here? The shepherd finds them and helps them get back on their feet again. They are restored to their original position. The psalmist describes the parallel human condition so beautifully. Why are you downcast, O my soul? Wow. Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise Him, my God and my Savior. Yeah. Uh, this is one of God's specialties, soul restoration. It is one of the things that make Him God. No one else can do this. Others may try, but are very limited. His desire is to bring us back to our original design before sin, rebellion, tragedies, and our own human mistakes took its toll on us, leaving us cast down. He wants the real you to stand up again and reflect His glory in the earth. We see this all the way through the Bible as God is patient with His children, even when they sin, fail, and disobey Him. And then I go on. Just look at the great leaders that have these issues and God restored them. God is in the business. God is in the business of restoring our souls. Amen. Yes. He wants us to know Him in our spirit and pursue Him with all of our hearts. And He wants us to be whole. You know, sometimes I don't think we understand what we have in our spirit, in our, in our relationship with God. Think about it. This is the best deal, the best contract, the best thing going in all the earth that we preach. Yes. Yes. Amen. At one moment in time, we are a sinner on our way to hell, living in selfishness and, 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 and all of our sin. And then at some point in time, when we cry out to God and we call upon Him to save us, there's a second in time when we were lost and on our way to hell, and there's a, then the next second we are born again into God's family, and we will live with Him forever and forever and forever. I jot it down. Right down the road the other day, just some of the benefits of really knowing God and of our salvation. Sins forgiven. Power of sin broken. It's one thing to get forgiven, but listen, we don't have to sin. Jesus broke. If somebody says, well, I just have to do this. I didn't know you don't. Or Jesus' blood was done in vain. He broke the power of all of the sin in our life. Lust, greed, pride, you name it. Yeah, we have some failures, but we get back, we repent and get back up on our feet. The power of it to, to force us into slavery to that thing was broken when Jesus died on the cross. Uh, yeah. oh. yeah, that's right. We inherit eternal life <laughs> and inherit everything that God's given us. I, any one of these things, blow, all of this blows my mind. We become a member of the body of Christ. We become a member of the body of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. He says we are a member, we are, we are chosen People, we are a royal priesthood. We can stand before God and declare His praises, the one who calls us out of darkness and the light. We are part of the holy priesthood. I can stand before God and I can praise Him and declare His praises and worship Him. And as a priest, I can offer sacrifices uh, of intercessions for my wife and my children and for my neighbors and for the people I work with and for all men everywhere and those in positions of authority. I'm a member of the royal priesthood of God. And I stand before God daily and I can worship and praise Him. And I can say, God, help my wife. Help my kids. Help my neighbors. Help me, Lord. Help, help every man. 6.5 billion people in the world. Those millions you set over them. I can stand there and I can cry out for God in the Spirit. And God will move on the earth. Yes, I'm a right. member of the royal priesthood. A royal priesthood. A royal priesthood. Yes. What an honor. What a great thing God has done. Amen. I can be filled with the Spirit. The fruits of the Spirit can flow out of me. The gifts of the Spirit can flow out of me. Amen. 